we, we've often said that at Intel we start with sand, we produce microprocessors, all the bit in the middle is the creativity and ingenuity of the people. And I think you'll agree that then, therefore, the education system needs to be fit for that purpose. It's something that has served us extremely well up to now. You could argue that I'm a product of it. Many of us here are. All of us are, I'm sure. And the, the notion that what has served us well in the past that will continue to serve us well in the future is something that we'd like to discuss. Uh, in the next decade, with nanotechnology and robotics and genetics and the internet and biotech, um, it's, these changes are coming rapidly, and if we can't adapt our educational system to be able to deal with that and to ride those waves of change, we've got a problem. Uh, and, and we do down the future in the sense of the capacity and the potential of our young people to actually compete and challenge internationally uh, against their peers around the world. The smart, agile economy, we have many of the attributes. Um, we have many of the costs. Um, we have the GDP per head, and we have the expectation of that. And that's the attribute of this higher group. And we need uh, an education policy that matches our national strategy to be a, a smart system. Technology and its use and integration in the everyday work of schooling is a major catalyst for change, for bringing about the kind of change which, uh, which we all universally acknowledge is the needs, uh, are the needs of the future. What, what makes a high-performing team versus an average team, and how do you turn good into great? And part of that is having actually what is called unreasonable ambition. So it's not enough to just have ambition. You have to actually reach for the stars. And the point was made a few times here. So from, 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 for Ireland, because we are small, there's only a small number of us, we actually have to have unreasonable ambition for our education system and aim for the stars. When students actually go into the classroom, they power down because they're so used to technology. I have a phone as such, and then when I got the phone, I just came along and I handed it to my young lad who's 16, and I said, put a nice ringtone on it, like, you know, and a nice screensaver, like, <laughs> make it look like I know something about it. I'm always conscious when I speak at these events of the game-changing moment that Intel brought to Irish education at Farmley in 2009, when it said, our education system is not all it's cracked up to be. I can tell you that shook us to our roots, and a few... Uh, Twelve months later, we had the publication of PISA through 2009, and that more than shook us to our roots. Despite the individual examples of good practice that Jerome has mentioned, I would argue that these have not been systemized. And the, uh, the sort of uh, aspirations we have around junior search reform, around a new entry system for third level, around CPD for teachers. They're, they're fine aspirations, but I think there's a major challenge in turning them into a reality. No great transformation was ever brought about anywhere without a raging impatience for the status quo. And I wonder what is the raging impatience inside the educational system. My children have left school. One of them, a girl, did science. I agree with you. Make it mandatory. But you know what? When you do, Make it fun, make it simple, make it interesting. Don't lock it into the boring, horrible, crushing syllabuses that you're struggling with today. The Hope Livingston Review that was released in the UK two or three months ago, um, which specifically focused on a skills review for high-tech industry, uh, mainly around video games and special effects, kind of the high end of media, if you like, um, had some very startling revelations in it, um, one of which was that only 5% of parents realise that physics and statistics were vital components um, for a career in a high-tech job, particularly um, the likes of video games. And more worryingly for me, only 15% of career guidance teachers were aware of that fact. just want to quote from a, a recent UNESCO uh, report which says, basic education is no longer sufficient to solve the grand global challenges of food, water, security, energy provision, infrastructure and healthcare provision. For that, science, engineering, technology, and math is required. The quality of our teaching force in our education system, the quality of the relationships in our schools, we really want to work well for our students. And something of that imaginative, ironic, anarchic spark that is in the Irish character, 
I think we need to play on those. And my oldest boy is disabled and for disabled people technology is a huge step forward in terms of access to education. So it's in every aspect of our lives so why isn't it embedded in our schools? It's bringing the influence of industry and commerce in with education. I mean I think we in education I, I, I mean, I think realise that there's fundamental change that has to be brought about and ICT is a great facilitator, as I said, a great catalyst for that. The one thing for this to work is we need broadband. We need enough broadband that if this technology is put into a school, that the broadband is there. Because two megabytes of broadband, how many computers will that run in a classroom? There's a call for action here. We actually have to now implement and figure out a way of doing that as cost effectively obviously as possible and in conjunction with industry. The notion of first of all deciding to compete, looking for where best in class was, identifying that, bringing it back into the system and perhaps importantly as was mentioned about the school being an integral part of our society, tapping into something uniquely Irish.